Ag- ag- um, Arti- Artris. Artis. Sorry. Artis, yeah. Artis, yeah. If you... I'm thinking, how can we get them all in the same room? If we dropped, like, hints... You'd tell them about your th- uh, theory that the workers are yeah, trying if they, to, if to revolt. Union, and yeah. um, the guy who employs the foreman uh, wants reassurance about the... Yeah, we need, we need to get they are them. handling them correctly. So it would gather them to talk to them to to make sure that everything is under control or or else. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. I think if we drop hints that all of the workhouses are planning to make a union between themselves, so workers are all like going to work up together instead of just being isolated incidents, that'll get everyone in the same room, and then we can uh, murder, <laughs> explosion, <laughs> gas, you know, whatever we want. Okay. So it seems like an assault plan, but we have a setup where we, we try to convince the foreman to get together. Yeah. Oh, oh um, did we do downtime last time? We did at the end. No, did we do at the end? I think we... My stress it's... bar says no. But... <laughs> you rolled really badly on your stress. You only got rid of three. Oh, that was at the start, I think. That been it. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, we'll we'll roll the engagement in a second, but the the setup kind of sets the theme for the engagement, I guess. Um, yeah, it's like a, it should be a social kind of. I think I think artists probably want to be leading this. So, so artists, you're you're tasked with getting the word out or trying to somehow force a meeting between the foreman that the workers are all getting together on something. Um, yep. How do you how do you want to go about that? Uh, to learn about who employs which foreman and then pretend to be a what would you say? An envoy or messenger that uh, goes from the boss to the employee and try to well the employee being the foreman, and tries to uh, to inform them that there is a meeting to uh, discuss the how the foreman will be handling uh, the the revolts and and try to uh, pass the revolt as a fact and not just a rumor. Actually, that's a good idea. You just tell everyone that everyone else is going to be at the meeting, and then they'll all come because they think everyone else is going to be there. <laughs> You're just like this address this time. And then they will be like, oh, if everyone else is going, we we got to be there. All right. Um, so spreading the rumor is good enough. Spreading the rumor is fine. Um, let's see. So I don't know. Do we see artists like we can kind of skip a, over some time and get sort of a montage? Are you are you just visiting nobles' houses or going to the foreman's directly? Are you just doing this as artists? Are you? Oh first... no, I have to. I have to first. Uh, s- learn about who employs the foreman because I want to pretend to be sent by the boss. Okay. Yeah. Um, Yeah, so... Hmm, Who owns all these foremen? Um, Well, no, no one noble owns all of them, but... That's fine. I don't go see each foreman, uh, every foreman at the same time. So yeah, I can yeah. pretend to be someone else every time. <laughs> it's not yeah. Pendrin, is it? Not uh, Scarlock. No, it is. Uh, it's a fella named. Um, uh, darn it! Hang on, let me find his name. <laughs> I know his. I know his name. Yeah, I mean, you, you're presenting yourself as a different boss every time. The the big cheese around here, like the guy who owns a lot of stuff. Um, yep. Who owns a big manufactory. The the one that kind of hinges on, everything kind of hinges on, uh, is... That's right. It's Holtz Maroden. I'm going to put that down. And the interesting part for for you, 
Artis, is that you definitely know who Hold Smarodin is. Um, he is a he's a powerful, notable noble in the city. Um, he uh, he's a member of the city council. Oh, nice. <laughs> and what does he own? What does what does his workshop do? It does something pretty important. Um, I think. Yeah, there are a lot of, like, docks nearby, so I think what he manufactures is, well, the quarry pit, uh, the mud quarry, um, is, is actually a crater, um, like a meteor crashed into the ground and uh, left behind a variety of precious ores and jewels embedded in the earth. Um... Some say that digging too deep might uncover uh, a demonic horror, but those are rumors. Um, man, I just thought we're getting Balrog lance. Whoa! I just thought of something. Oh man! Hang on, I gotta put. Uh, hang on, I gotta do a thing. Hang on. Uh... Oh dear, we've given him an idea. <laughs> Evil demon under city Balrog. <laughs> we'll fly, you fools. Okay, good. Perfect. All right. Um, oh, it's so perfect. It's so perfect. Like, it's so perfect in so many ways. Oh, I have to keep it to myself for so long. Okay, so, yes. Holtz Martin. Uh, he gathers ore. He smelts. He has a smelt tree. There's a big smelt tree. Um, and I think, uh, yeah, there's, there's like, all these buildings. Um, the big one is the smeltery. That's Holtz Marodin's place. Um, there are a bunch of smaller places where they deal with other ores, um, where they deal with gemstones, where they deal with... You know, there's somebody making tools also. They make the mining equipment. They... All that kind of stuff. But here at the big at the big warehouse, that's, that's Holtz's um, foundry. And so, so you're dressed up in a disguise. You're not coming here as Artist Clemenster? <laughs> no, I couldn't because uh, I'm. If I show myself in uh, any place where, as myself, as artist Clemenster, I uh, risk uh, going meeting uh, debtors, which would ask me for money and probably arrest me because I'm not able to pay. Right. <laughs> so I don't risk much uh, going presenting myself as artist Clemenster when I'm talking to. People which are um, less fortunate in their dressing, but for <laughs> uh, official business, it's kind of risky. Yeah. Okay. So, so you're coming into the the warehouse. Um, what's your fake name, and how are you how are you dressed now? Uh, oh, are we going to need to generate names <laughs> in a regular business? Not often. Uh, I lost the page again. Oh yeah, you had a some kind of uh, handout about the names. Oh, sure, yeah. Good. We're going to run out of them quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Wester it is. <laughs> Um, so I would be dressed not as nobles this time, but just as a mere servant. A courier, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe not a courier, but, uh, what do you call that? The butler. Okay. Some... And you and you said, uh, I'm sorry, which name did you say? Wester. Wester. Uh... uh... I just need to add. Well, it, it, it'll be funny. People know Holtz Martin uh, in other games, other characters, and it'll be funny if they start hunting down this fake person named Wester. <laughs> Mr. Wester. Okay. Whoops. Uh, 
Um, all right, so uh, you you go in to meet this guy. Um, so they, they bring you in. You're already in the office, sitting there, um, dressed up as as Mister Wester. Um, and yeah, this guy comes in. Uh, he's got a. Uh, I mean, his suit looks clean and pressed. Um, this foreman doesn't doesn't get uh, doesn't get his hands dirty. Um, his his sleeves are like rolled up. Um, but he's got a vest on and everything, and he's got a clock he's looking at as he comes in. And behind you, you know, at a window um, in this office, we can see the smeltery going on behind you. Um, big vats of molten ore and stuff uh, being poured around. And uh, I think uh, what they make, what they make is stuff to... Uh, what do they make? Uh, they make... I want to say weapons. Yeah, I think they make weapons. Uh, mostly. Mostly they make weapons to mount onto, you know, battleships and stuff. Like big weapons. Big guns, cannons and things. Um, or they also make uh, big the big, like, struts or um, apparatuses you need to build a, a lightning tower. Um... That kind of stuff. So Holtz has big contracts that that pay out really well, um, and you can see all in the background people doing that. Um, somebody falls into a smelting thing and dies, and and already just starts <laughs> and they keep working. Uh, and yeah, the guy comes in. Um, I think he's pretty tall, and um, he's not like a caricature of a fat cat. Um, he's actually kind of built and looks strong like maybe he was a, a soldier or a, a sea captain or something um, before he became a foreman. He looks able-bodied, basically. Um, and he sits down looking at his watch and he says, um, Okay, Mr. Wester, uh, I've got a little bit of time for you, but we're pressed. Um, what seems to be the issue? I heard you had a, an important missive. Yeah, I'm just, I guess I'm supposed to have learned his name, right? Or oh, I see if I you, learned, I see how yep. it is. Turn it back on me. <laughs> is that not how it works? Oh yeah, the button for those names twice. As <laughs> um, his name. Uh, his name is Narcus. Um. I want to say break iron just cause, but I, that sounds more like Scovlin to me, and I'm pretty sure he's Akarosi. Um, although maybe he is Scovlin. I did just describe him as a big dude. Um, you know what? He is Scovlin, uh, and he's he's got mutton chops. These big, big <laughs> mutton chops that are they're not like bright red, but they're sort of like you know auburn, sort of like almost brownish red, um, and you know, his hair is all slick to one side, and he's got big scars on his hands. Um, and, yeah, he's, he's definitely been in fighting, you can tell. He's been a soldier before. Um, and he he's kind of got the hint of a Scovlin accent, but he actually kind of suppresses it. Um, and so, yeah, his name is Narcus Break Iron. Okay. So I would say that, uh, Mr. Brickhind, I'm guessing you will take time to do your own job. I'm representing uh, Mr. Mauden, which is getting worried that there may be a delay in the next shipment due to the mm, the mutiny which is brewing uh, inside this factory. And to make sure that uh, no uh, no money is lost due to the uh, foolishness of these employees, we would like to organize a meeting with you and 
other formants of the other factories as this uh, revolt appears to be um, led by a collective of, of what do you want to call that? workers, which were a uh, collective of operators of uh, multiple factories. He says, um, this is, uh, and this is uh, a, an order you're giving me from Marodin himself? Indeed. Well, okay. Uh, I, I I don't think any of my men are involved in this unless you have something to tell me about that. I can I can take some action now if you'd like. And warn the other factories about our hunt for them? That would not be wise. We want to strike at all of them at this at the same time to avoid any any one of them fleeing or going into hiding. Okay. Yeah, let's roll your action roll. Um, so, what kind of what action do you think you're making? Um, what? Uh, That's uh, sway or command, I guess. It's up to you which way you want to go with it. I think I think I have. I would kind of fit the consequences to to what you're okay. doing. Um, I'm guessing uh, I'm commanding here because I'm representing the boss and I'm giving him an order. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you're sweat. You're you're commanding. Uh, I don't think it's desperate. It's definitely risky. Um, and what's your effect level? Well. I say that your effect level is limited uh, just on your word, unless... Don't you have an item that's like uh, documents or something? I th don't think so. I think I have plans of the uh, the buildings, but uh, not okay, effect okay. documents. Um, you can just pull out documents, though. Yeah. You have a, yeah, the spider gets a fine cover identity. Oh, there you go. You have a fine cover identity. Um, and blueprints as well, if you need. But, yep. The, blueprints would not be helping me here. Yeah. <laughs> a <laughs> fine architectural drawing. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, whiskey is really helpful. When if you're, is it as long as you're dealing with Bazo, it's helpful. <laughs> it's useful. <laughs> I think the fine cover identity is good. Like, You've you've got a pretty convincing cover identity. You've oh, got... paperwork. Yeah, so okay, yeah. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna say I'm gonna give you standard effect on that. Then I'm gonna give you increased effect for that. Um, do I have a devil's bargain? I mean, I do. Um, the devil's bargain. As a real Wester, he's going to get hunted down for this. <laughs> <laughs> the Devil's Bargain is that impersonating uh, somebody who, who works for Holtzmarden. Holtzmarden is known to... Uh, he's known to have strong arms who work for him. Um, you know... You guys have heard of even even <coughs> scoundrels like yourselves um, who are on the payroll of Marodin and who every so often just run do work for him as a bodyguard or to beat somebody up uh, or something like that, to take revenge on people who have wronged him. And my God, so many people have wronged him. Um, so the devil's bargain is that The word of this will get back to Holtz Marodin, and he's going to send in... It'll only be a matter of time before he sends in... Um, Maybe uh, he'll hire us. 
<laughs> before yeah, before he sends in somebody to to deliver violence on this place. Um, if you take that devil's bargain, you'll get an extra dice. You can ignore the devil's bargain and send it away and just roll your one command die. Or you can instead push yourself, uh, take two stress, and you can get an extra dice also that way. Yeah. You can't push and also take the devil's bargain. Not both. Yeah, but I won't take your devil's bargain because, I mean... We only had the first foreman. <laughs> what will it be? At, uh... Well, we're, we're gonna we're kind of um, compacting all of the foremans into this one. Um, this oh. is the most important one. You you've gone to all the others, um, and I'm gonna just let this roll <clears throat> kind of decide. If you're fine with taking the stress, I, I, if you're low on it, I'd recommend it. I've never taken any stress, and I think yes, I will be taking stress here because. That's kind of my main goal in the in this mission is to get all the foremen to yeah. assist at the meeting. So yes, I will take the stress for to accomplish my goal. Cool. So um, are you? Uh, sorry, space. are you like gonna give them the location of this meet so we can set it? Yes. Yeah. Yep. But uh, we will have to yeah, we'll go for that. flashbacks uh, for that, right? Yeah. Uh, so. I'll, Throw the dice first, right? Yeah, and just oh. remember to mark your two stress on your stress. Okay, sticker. two stress. Uh, where is it? Come on, double six. Two. Right. And come on. There, there is something like to uh, macros to roll. Yeah, if uh, you just click on, if you see it on your skills, if you just literally highlight it and click on it, it, it'll just do it for you. So if you just like highlight command on your sheet and just press it, it'll come up with a little thing. I kind of got to go for about 15 minutes. So, it doesn't work. On your character sheet? Yes, <laughs> it's not working. Uh, you just press command and nothing comes up on the roll 20? Nope, apparently not. It's, it turns red and I click and nothing happens. It's not hidden behind your sheet? Is, it, is, it, is your sheet like popped out or anything? Or? Yes, it is. Uh, how do I... It's, okay, it's no, weird. Wait, open again. What is... Clemster. Oh, wait, there is a... Oh, that's right. There is a small um, pop-up which showed up. Oh yeah, it just says, just says input. Right? It's, it's uh, which uh, which kind of it is it? Uh, risky control disparate. Risky, I think. Yeah, it was. Risky. risky standard. Risky. Standard. Effects standard, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. When you die, and I pushed myself, so I had to one die, one die, sorry. Uh, yes, one extra dice. Uh, okay. For the rest. Not bad at all. Can't see my school yet. Okay, five five. Oh, nice. All right. So, so there's going to be a complication. <laughs> um. Um, let me see. This is going to be... So we're not putting you desperate. We're going to put you... We're not going to... Hmm. Something's outside. No, we're we're gonna go with a complication. Um, I'm gonna start a clock. Um, I'm gonna put it on the council, and this clock is gonna be called uh, the Big Guns. So you didn't take the devil's bargain. Uh, instead, your complication is going to be that I'm going to start a clock that will add up to that devil's bargain. Okay. Um, but he gives you a nod. He gives you the okay. 
Um, the basically the the thing we that you don't see um, is that after you've left, he is going to send a, a notice or a, a letter to Marodin um, about all this stuff he's heard, and. The meeting will happen before Martin gets that note, but eventually, the more you guys act, the more attention Martin's going to give this problem. Um, so, you know, there you go. Um, uh, yeah, so we lost uh, Samuel for a minute, I think. But let's start talking about rolling the engagement. Um. Mm -hmm. so sorry what was the complication <laughs> so Marden uh, is is gonna be it's gonna be a matter of time before he sends in people to just you you said there's some kind of uprising the workers are banding together and it's a matter of time before Marden sends in some people to quash. pacify yeah. <laughs> yeah okay okay that's not good am I left alone in the, the office at some point What are you? What are you trying to do? <laughs> My uh, signature move: <laughs> sitting uh, letters and stuff like this. If I'm in the office of the foreman, this is exactly where they would be storing documents and letters about uh, future plans, uh, comments, and kind of the place where I would be interested in stealing deeds and things like that. If I am left. Alone in the room, not police here, obviously. What are you, what are you trying to steal? What, what, tell me what you want. <laughs> I mean, it's it's the um, what do you say? It's a trait of the character. He steals the <laughs> the letters of people to to gain uh, advantages and yeah. yeah, such yeah. A, what? But uh, oh, what kind of information? Uh, who is buying what? Who is so? Who buys mostly from this foundry? Yeah. That's what you mean. Yeah, the information on the the, the exchanges which are made, which can always be sold at other people. Sure, uh, we can call that a flashback um, for one stress. So if you mark one stress, we can roll that. Okay. Um, what action do you think that is? To study, I guess. If I'm alone in the the room, it would be study, I guess. Okay. Yeah, you you find a you find a moment that you're alone um, to like rifle through through some documents um, or through a, an accounting book or something. Um. Yeah, we'll mark one stress, and you'll roll a study. Um, do I have a devil's bargain for this? <laughs> yeah, um, hmm. I do. I do. Uh, what I want, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll do it easy. Uh, you're going to be risky and standard effect because you're, I mean, you're all alone here, right? There's, it's still risky, but you're, there's really nobody stopping you. Um, what I want is heat. Um, I will mark two heat on your crew. Well, I'm clear on who is my crew. <laughs> Uh, it's the lost. The lost. The lost will add two heat. Right now they have zero. Mm. Okay, good. How many? How much heat can they take? Like ten? Yeah, like nine, nine before it adds a wanted level. <laughs> Knowing us, we'll get heat very quickly. Well, sure, it's, too bad. it's not much of a loss. I will take the devil bargain then. Okay. I think it took us, took us like two sessions to get a wanted level last time. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, cool. So this is just you like exposing yourself a little bit, right? You're in this office. Um, 
meeting this guy face to face kind of thing. Um, yeah, you're you're leaving a small trail behind you. Um, so yeah, you get an extra dice. You can roll study. It's risky standard. So, risky standard and one dice. Look at look again. Ooh. Okay. This thing. So look a gift five in the mouth. <laughs> Uh, you are going to get some information there. Some pretty good information. Um, well, obviously, the Imperial Army buys from him. Um, the Spark Rites buy from him. These these two should have been obvious, right? And those two, I think everybody would know. But you also... You notice something that there's somebody else buying from him. Um, and it seems odd. I don't think... You don't get their name. Their name isn't written down because they're kind of off the books or something. Um, but every month you see in this, this accounting book that you're looking through, every month there is something called... It's, it's, it's something that's supposed to look innocuous or unimportant. Uh, it's called, like, bulk scrap or something, right? But it's clearly, like, it's too much stuff. And it's it, the price of it is way too high uh, to just be bulk scrap. Um, if it was just, like, bits of metal or, you know, ruined things or stuff that was burned or a broken this or whatever... Um, the price for it wouldn't be so high, but they're keeping an accurate account of it. They're just calling it trash. Um, this would be like trash service, five million dollars this week. Jeez, uh, they don't make that much trash. But you don't get the name of who they're sending it to, but they're definitely sending it off books to somebody, and they are sending it to somewhere in the lost district. Um, the Lost District is a place that used to be a part of the city, but has when they erected the lightning barrier, um, that part of the city was outside the barrier. So it's like an old husk of where the city used to be, but it's overrun with spirits um, and ghosts. And they're sending it there. They're sending it out there. They are shipping it there. Now, there is a group that runs the Lost District. The, the spirit wardens run the Lost District, which means they don't let anybody go into it. Um, people like to go to the Lost District who are crazy because they want to gather artifacts, right? There are ancient artifacts from the from the old times. write this down. Yeah, I'm writing this down. <laughs> there, there are artifacts... Crazy from, people go there. Oof. From the old times that people like to gather and bring back into the city, and it's like, oh, well, look, I found... You know, like, magic is dead and the world is gone, but look, I have a staff of fireballs, so we're in the good. Um, people like to do that kind of thing, or get artifacts and stuff, and smuggle them in, make money, or melt somebody or something. Spirit wardens are like, no, nobody's doing that. Nobody comes here. We run this joint. Um, but if it was the spirit wardens he was shipping that stuff to, it would just fucking say the spirit wardens. He doesn't have to hide it. He doesn't have to hide giving equipment or tools to the spirit wardens that's a good thing to do he is giving this to somebody else well the spirit wardens won't be happy about that that's good stuff to know uh artists so uh that's what you find in the books you don't know who it is but it's somebody getting probably not scrap metal Okay. Good. Okay. Uh, yeah, so let's talk about the engagement roll. And we're going to have Bingo roll that, I think. Cool. Just one sec. Um, okay, uh, so we've got to count up these dice, right? 
Yeah, so you start with one dice for sheer blind luck. Um, and you get an extra dice if the plan is particularly bold or daring. I, I'd say so. It's pretty... Yeah, <laughs> it's just going right after everybody at once. Um, you uh, lose a dice if it's overly complex or contingent. It's not. <laughs> good, good. It's just like, get everybody in the same room, and we blast them all. Um, you, so you have two dice. Uh, does the plan's detail expose a vulnerability of the target or hit them where they're weakest? Yeah, yeah. They don't know, they don't expect that something like this is happening. Um, yeah, and they're very scared about uprisings that they're willing to just meet within a day to get it sorted, so... Yeah. I feel like that's maybe exploiting their fear of some people rising up. I don't know. Um, Either way. And I don't think they're strongest against this approach, because it's not actually a workers' uprising, which is what they'd be strongest against. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's it's a few hired murderers, so that's not what they're strongest against. Um, any friends or contacts providing aid or insight for the operation? I was going to ask Sirio, the veteran who got me the, the, the explosive last time, for something else. But I wanted his uh, help. Okay. Sure. Either him or Dingus the Jester. I'm wondering <laughs> which one is more likely to have a flamethrower available. A flamethrower? Uh, well, you see... Go ahead. You see... Either that... I think we need to do something flashy for their deaths. We can't just go in there and murder them and hack them to pieces. It's just boring. We need to. We need the. I'm thinking if we could position the meeting place somewhere high up, and then collapse the floor, and they will fall into some sort of grinding device. <laughs> we said the plan was supposed to be simple. <laughs> Very simple. Collapse floor. They fall, and it's a, it's an accident. But everyone knows that we did it. That's that's what we want. Well, if you hmm. do that, that's going to require a pretty big stress load. Um, yeah, and it will become contingent at that point. Yeah, I mean uh, that's like clockwork. What about a flamethrower? Because <laughs> then I could be like, "You want to fire your workers? Well, they're firing you." And... <laughs> yeah. um, so that's that's still going to require some, some some flashback, but it's not as contingent. No, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Um, kill them with fire. Because Sirio is in the military, so I'm sure he might um, he might be able to. Uh, then yeah, I'm going to ask him for help either way. Okay. Um, and otherwise, Mercy could just help out, as she always does. No, I'm fine with that. Uh, we'll, we'll deal with that, that, that flashback in a second. Um, but that is up to four dice. Um, and then... We're going to lose some, because, as usual, are any enemies or other parties interfering? Actually, they're not right now. Really? You've, got no, you've got no enemies or rivals <laughs> interfering yet. Um, you guys aren't you guys aren't enemies. Well, you're enemies with the foreman, but they're not interfering. They're the ones being acted on, right? They don't know that this is happening. There's there's nobody else involved in this yet. I mean, you guys are gonna roll fives and shit, and I'm gonna involve people, like obviously. But you know, relish it while it lasts, dude. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just like, I've never had this many dice. Usually, I'm like, yeah. And then you're like, okay, who's interfering? And then it just goes down and down and down. <laughs> Um, uh, okay, so we're at you, four dice. You are going to lose a dice for tier, because... Yeah, tier one. I mean, it's tier two? It's not even tier one, actually. You guys are tier zero. Uh, because the lost have nothing. Um, I, sorry, guys, I'm back. Uh, no problem, sir. Sorry. Um, so you're going to lose a dice, just one dice. Um, I mean, I could probably say more than that, but since I'm going to make you roll on the stress, on the flashback to get the, the flamethrower, I'm going to call it good at three. Okay. Wait, flamethrower? I don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> so, so here's the official... Roll for a one-liner. <laughs> here's the official take, Samuel. Um, the artists... Um, yeah, Artis uh, successfully convinced all the foremen together together. Um, and Bingo wants to procure a flamethrower um, so that he can say a cool one-liner, and then he figures that's the quickest way to murder a, a room full of people. 
Well, that'd be a bit of slashing and a bit of. It's more for the the inspiration for the people. If the workers see their people, their, their bosses being like flaming and dead and everything, they'll be like, cool. Cool. Rather than just a couple of hacked up corpses, and they'll be like, well, all right. <laughs> and it could be seen from afar, so people will notice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you'll be like, hey, do you know those guys got hacked up? Yeah, it happens all the time. You know, this big got set on fire in a big room and went screaming everywhere? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's all about image. <laughs> okay. I'm an image consultant. Uh, <laughs> so, bingo, as far as procuring a flamethrower. Do you want me to run my thing now, by the way? I've got it ready. Um... Or should I wait for the engagement? Oh, roll the engagement? Sure, you can roll the engagement. That's fine. Okay. I just had it ready. And... Oh, oh! Okay. <laughs> you know what? You know what? Nice. Uh, Mark? Uh, it's going to be three stress for a flamethrower. Oh, jeez. <laughs> uh, All right. But with your crit, you don't have to roll for it. You've got a fucking flamethrower. And it's going to work. And it's good. And it's it does what a flamethrower does. Speed. <laughs> Yeah, we'll just skip the whole acquire an asset thing. So tell me, guys, how do we how do we set up this thing? Like, foremen start showing up. Um, where where do we even have this meeting? Where did you set up this meeting? Not a place close to water. <laughs> I, yeah, really? I would say honestly, I'd say somewhere. In on a, in a factory or something would be nice. Or uh, yeah. you know how those factories have the usually have like the catwalks and the offices kind of hung above, so they can oh kind of overseers can see their people working. Yeah, I'm thinking somewhere compact, but then suddenly open if everyone can hear and see what's going on. Just for the as I said, image consultant, and so the people know what's happening. Um, that is just what Bingo wants. Um. But uh, you guys are welcome to, um, you know, like, say, whatevs. I'm not kids, too. I I had an idea to murder them all, but a flamethrower is great. So. Oh, no, yeah, uh, the flamethrower is more of, like, a backup, you know? Like a... All right. <laughs> I mean, sure. <laughs> what, was your, what was your idea? I, I, all I can do is, if it's in a factory, then there must be lots of the spirits of dead poor people. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, okay, that's so, you, we, we and, took a different. I, I want to collapse the floor in some sort of meat grinder. You want to summon ghosts? Yep. Dude, we got plenty of ways to kill these guys. <laughs> <laughs> We're all free. That's pretty good. Let's say, um, let's say one of the factories is is failed, like it's a an abandoned one, like maybe out here on the very end somewhere. Um, like maybe it's not even on the map, right? It's not one of the buildings on the map. It's an, it's an old factory, like, far away. Um, and, yeah, there was some kind of accident or something um, where a bunch of workers died. You know, like, some kind of fire or, um, yeah, probably a fire or maybe a collapse or something. Um, and the workers got trapped inside and everybody burned, um, kind of thing. Um, and then, you know, when the spirit wardens came, like, it was so hard to deal with the thing, all they did was, like, just burn the place again uh, with electroplasm, and it's just sort of a husk of a building. And there's just ashes, and you could probably dig in there and find bones. Um, but the other workers consider that place like a curse or something. Um, man, actually, shit. Yeah, this is good too. Thank you, Bandy. I need to. I need to write down a note. <laughs> Damn it! Stop it. We're <laughs> getting my ideas. A factory of ghost corpses. I'm having deja vu. Uh, hang on, I'm just gonna go and grab dinner and just stand there. So I'll be like one minute. <laughs> Oh man, that one's good. Ooh, okay. Yes, and Bandy, 
Yes, you can sense the spirits here. Um, which kind of shocks you in a couple of ways. First of all, the spirit, the spirit wardens don't do half-cocked jobs. Um, so when they burn a place with, with electroplasm, that place should just not have anything in it. But you do sense spirits here that you can access. Uh, and of course the workers treat this place as cursed someplace, like don't go there. Um, we stay away from there. Um, and probably some of the foremen are a little nervous. Like, it still is kind of spooky inside of here, but they're... They agree to come. Um, I think we can work with this. Mm -hmm. If all the workers burn to death here, and then they burn to death here, that's, like, more for our cause, right? Yeah. Shame the workers won't see it too much, but word will spread. <laughs> so is one of you playing, like ringleader or something to gather them all together or what or to get them all into this room yeah i mean they're coming but where where are they supposed to go right how do they know that is one of you saying like oh this way yes here yeah, on the crosshairs i'm thinking just like i'm just thinking here like uh, just an office with just like a makeshift table set with some chairs just yeah. like get them all sat down and then we just yeah mm. and <laughs> It could be bandy, but I think I'm gonna be have to, I'm gonna have to do some ghost summoning, so okay. I need some privacy for that. So is it is it Artis? Are you? I mean, <laughs> again, it's not non-violent, and yeah, but I would not be advertising the position of the meeting with the pretext that we wouldn't want to alert the non-existing revolt leaders. <laughs> okay. And, well, what better place to make sure of, uh, we're not being spied on than the um, hunted uh, ruins of the factory. Yeah. And, I mean, their foreman's. Why would they be scared of us a few ghosts? <laughs> 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 They're being paid to, um, to be bossy and strong. <laughs> yeah. So, so... We've got, I mean, you say an office room, but, I mean, this is a husk. This place is an ash pile. But you've got a couple, like, a desk and a few chairs sitting out, just, like, amongst some ashes all around them. <laughs> um, and they all start wandering in, and a lot of them look weirded out. Like, this This is a strange place, and this whole setup looks looks odd with the desks and the chairs that we're all supposed to sit in, in just an ashy ruin but eventually they do kind of get in and file in um so ashes to ashes was an alternative for one line <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good one all right yeah all right um and and all of them are sort of milling about and looking at each other, not really saying anything. Um, do so. So, oh. art, artists, do you say anything to them? Do you like gather them to attention? Are we planning on starting the discussion before killing them all? Uh... It's it's up to you. I mean, do you, are you supposed to like get their attention and be like, everybody, line up here? Yeah, stand right there. Are you, <laughs> are you directing the them at all? I mean, yeah, sure. This one. I mean, you could be yeah. like. So, so they can have so uh, the two as can approach discreetly, and we could have like the whole supervillain long, long table thing. Yeah, as I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> so what? Like, what are you planning having a cable? <laughs> well, so so they all come in and they're all milling about, um, and eventually uh, the guy shows up, uh, Mister Wester. He comes in and he gives you, gives you a look, uh, Artis. I'm Wester, sure, yeah, okay. Yeah. What? Yeah, that's weird. I thought, <laughs> I, was, I thought it was Artis's cover identity. Oh, oh you're Wester. Uh, yeah, what's the guy's name? Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. I didn't mean... I don't, I don't see you <laughs> doing the job. Narcus. I'm Narcus sure. Breakiron, that's right. Okay. Yeah, Narcus Breakiron comes in and, and he gives you a nod. Um, and he kind of gathers everybody around and he says, Okay, 
Well, Mr. Wester, what, what's the business then? I guess I'm just stood behind Artis as, as hired muscle right now, point out. I was thinking of hiding myself on the table, but that's... Okay. That's Are you wearing your crazy clothing? <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm, I'm loaded for bear, but I, I'm bodyguards usually looking like that. Okay. Yeah, everybody, uh, yeah, we forgot to say this, but everybody needs to set their load. I'll give um... you a hint. <laughs> <laughs> Rhymes of Chevy. Normal. Okay. And, um, light, I guess. Light. I don't wear. I don't have any weapons, so no. Or... I'm pretending to be a, a butler, so I would not be carrying weapons and nor any anything heavy. Okay, so you're going light load. That sounds good. Okay. Yeah, so I don't know. Somebody's gotta. Somebody's gotta act. Like it's. It. I think there's like. Well, what's what's the business then? And like everybody starts to look around. Like, what the hell is going <laughs> on? Um, I don't know. Bandy, do you want to start with ghosts? Um, I mean, or do you want I, me to just open up? I, th I think right now the plan is that uh, if artists, you can get them it, do something like, all right, now we've got this fake map of like this is where the rebels are hiding. And while this happening, and we get all their attention pointed there, we can start to like lock the doors, and I can start <laughs> summoning ghosts, and they can go. Out, all right, now uh, I've just got to go get another map, which I forgot outside, and you just walk out, lock that door, and then we summon ghosts, and anyone that gets out gets bingoed. <laughs> well, bingo's in the room too. <laughs> yeah, but once that he go out with artists. Yeah. Okay. Then we guard the doors and let the ghosts handle it. I mean, so, we, can just, we can just, if you ghost and I flame for at the same time, we'll have like a cheeky, you know, like a, a sandwich. It's true. I'm just worried about friendly fire because the ghosts, the ghosts are, if they maintain the memories of before, they'll probably go after the foreman over you. But oh, if you yeah. can flame for, eh. <laughs> Okay, so, so then it's up to artists to like, set this up um, and get them distracted and then give him and Bingo a chance to get out of the way before ghosts happen. Um, so, so tell me how you do that, artists. But I, I will be addressing the crowd then uh, and telling them that uh, we are gathered here today to <laughs> uh, discuss uh, we are gathered here today because you are about to fail to do your job. Indeed, uh, we have been informed of a incoming revolt among the workers, and we have seen that uh, their leader, for once, got smart and uh, distributed themselves among multiple factories. So we will have to take um, coordinated action to capture them all. And so we can't simply um, start to, to gather, uh, to, damn it. <laughs> uh, I lost the word. Uh, to, oh, damn it, uh, capture uh, people one by one. We will have to strike. Uh, at every place at the same time and I have just the plan for this and I would like to present to you the uh, people which will be introduced uh, will, would be um, inserted into your factories to do just that and that is the time where I would be going for the door to pretend to let people enter yet leave <laughs> okay what, what action do you think you're making there artists uh, that's more complicated. Yes. Uh, sway or consort? I don't know. Uh, perhaps the description say about speaking to crows. Well, I mean, it still could be a command. Um, I'm not telling them what to do. Okay. I mean, it's 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 up to you. I think I think I think consort or sway. Hey, you've, you've, you're, you're free to choose either of those, I think. 
is there a handout on the different oh. competencies? Because I'm not too familiar with the words to know the. Uh... Yeah. Yeah, I've got that. Um, Consort's more consorting with friends, isn't it? Or allies or contacts. That's all. Yes. Um, the thing Sways is. Sways probably a little bit. The, oh. The thing is this, that they, they do think he's a friend, uh, right? Um, I... They think he represents a, a noble lord. Um, but Sway also works, because you are in disguise. Um, it's up to you, whichever one you think is, is more descriptive of your action. With connection, I guess connection implies that we know them well, and uh, a Sway would fit better. Okay. So going for a Sway, um, a Devil's Bargain, I have for you... Okay, I'm going to make this Devil's Bargain. <laughs> if you let me tick the big guns clock once... <laughs> big um, gun clock. How many slots is there in this clock? It's a four-part clock. Um, okay. I'll just click it once, and then I won't, <laughs> I won't tick it as a part of... I'm not going to tell you that. Yeah, no. You let me tick the clock once. That's, that's mm. that, that was going too far. It was getting too, too meta with the devil's bargain. <laughs> you can have an extra dice, or you can push yourself, or you can ignore it. Whatever you want. Sure, let's go with the clock. <laughs> All right, one section filled, and. You have an extra dice for your sway. Um, okay. Is it risky standard or? Uh, you're actually controlled. Um, oh. Controlled and we'll say standard. Standard. You know, if you if you're successful, you get out of the room. Standard and one extra die. Submit. Oh no. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, you start to make your move to get out of the room, and, um, yeah, it's, uh, Narcus. He, he just sort of walks over and stands in your way, and he says, now hold on just a minute. I think I've got some questions for you, as well as everybody else. Why don't you just sit so you know. down? Oh, sorry, Justin, go on. He says, why don't you sit down? And we clear some things up before you go about anymore. I say, just so you know, artist, Big Girl's just looking at you and he's just got a hand on, you know, his hatchet and he's just like raising an eyebrow like, <laughs> <laughs> whenever you're ready. Um, let's, let's take our second break right there. <laughs> okay. Give you, give you a chance to think of response because... Things could go fucking crazy. Uh, basically, I'm pushing you to a risky position, is all I'm doing there. But, yeah, let's, t let's take another five minutes. Um, okay. See you guys in five. Thank you. 